concerned to this idea of, um, of a kind of uh, dualism based on permanence and ephemerality with the, uh, the sense of permanence around which the uh, concept of the self is formed originating in uh, a persistent pattern of bodily awareness. Uh, again, I'm citing Damasio and one or two other people here. Uh, some kind of a persistent message is sent up from the body to the brain. Keep kind of saying, here I am, here I am, here I am. It persists throughout our life, through all the other changes that are taking place in terms of what our conscious and non-conscious thoughts are doing, in terms of what our physical body is doing. There's a persistent pattern of information. And uh, what I'm kind of suggesting is that that forms one element of what we perceive phenomenally to be a dualism. Uh, where am I going with that? Well, I, go, I suppose I'm interested in, in relation to a particular kind of um, training. Because really. certainly some kinds of training for excellence, performer training, I'm thinking particularly, but it might apply to other kinds of training, is to do with uh, notions of centering. Uh, so, for example, body-mind centering practice, which I think is Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen's thing, uh, has this idea of finding a center, uh, a, a still center of a turning experience. Uh, and most physiological and psychophysiological training strategies have some kind of a notion of a center uh, and uh, the, the positive benefits associated with finding that center, centering oneself. Uh, I think the purpose of perhaps the purpose of that is, uh, is to kind of reinforce this idea of the center of one's being, the center of one's self, which we all need, I'm sure, uh, is ultimately anchored to a bodily experience. I think if we don't have that, or if we don't think about that, there might be a tendency to think of that most uh, intimate and uh, self-defining part of oneself, not as being that physiological thing, but as being some kind of um, narrative or some kind of skill or property or physical attribute. The things we're good at, the things we say, the things we know, the things that we profess to believe, um, those kind of uh, important but possibly not necessarily central features of our being, of ourselves. I think if we associate those things with ourselves, with our center, and say that it's what I ultimately uh, am, this, this persistent being which is myself, is associated with this set of beliefs, um, or this set of skills, or this particular kind of a, of a history, uh, then that's ultimately fragile and requires a lot of maintenance and is subject to assault and damage. Uh, and it's complex. It needs probably needlessly complex. Certainly in something like performer training, I think if you're trying to maintain a sense of, of those kind of uh, centers, which might translate as a kind of ego centers, then it's much less likely to be able to make the kind of moves, take the kind of risks, um, uh, expose oneself, make oneself vulnerable in certain ways, than if you are not anchored in those kind of possibly illusory centers or more eccentric or more, more peripheral areas of oneself than if one is more, more closely associated with this uh, persistent pattern of some kind, ultimately a physiological pattern, a physiological sense of here I am, here I am, 